everyone, I'm Trisha, a writer and a gardener and welcome to my channel. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about why soil matters, why most of us get this wrong and then I'll let you in on a little secret that can take your gardening game to new heights. So make sure to stay till the very end of this video. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can stay updated on all the plant guides and stories that I put up weekly. Now let's begin. we start we need to understand why soil matters to a non-gardener or even to a beginner soil is just soil right something that plants grow in but to a gardener after light soil is everything soil is fundamental because it is home to colonies of microbes and nutrients which play a huge role in determining the health of a plant's root system and if you want your plants to be healthy it's all about firm fleshy roots because they are the foundations of a plant there's no getting around it bad roots equals a very sad plant one of the main reasons people end up killing their plants is because of root rot but what is root rot root rot occurs when the soil is wet for long durations eventually a plant's roots drown and rot begins to set in think of what happens if we leave a sheet of paper in water for too long it first becomes soggy and then it slowly dissolves and finally it completely disintegrates. Well, the same thing happens with the plant's root system if it is sitting in water for too long. Too much water and the soft tissue begins to rot and then it is unable to send essential nutrients and water up to the plant above the soil surface and eventually the poor plant begins to wither away. We don't think about it, but a root system also needs oxygen to survive. In fact, there are many plants for whom good air circulation is non-negotiable. Orchids, air plants and other epiphytes like anthuriums are a few examples. What does all this have to do with soil? Isn't this just a case of overwatering? Well, yes and no. Let's look at this Dracaena fragrance or corn plant that I recently got from a nursery. The soil it's come with is normal garden soil with probably some manure mixed in. Now let's see what happens when I water into the soil. I already know the results but I want you to see it too. An hour later I came back to check on the soil. When I try to make a ball of this soil, it is dense and clumpy in my hand and I can actually feel the water in it. Also, look at how sticky it is on my hand. Of course, there's nothing wrong with garden soil per se. However, for indoor plants, this isn't the ideal soil. Garden soil works for nursery plants because they are grown out in the open or under green shades, which promotes efficient transpiration of water. In other words, the more light and heat a plant receives, the faster a plant will draw and lose water and the quicker the soil will dry out. But that's not the case with indoor plants because plants indoors receive 50% less light. If you haven't seen my video on the best light for indoor plants, be sure to hit the link because it explains in great detail the light our indoor plants love and require. And we all know that there's nothing more important than light when it comes to our plants. But back to soil. Soil like this remains wet for longer periods and most of us simply keep watering into it which causes further waterlogging and eventual root rot. So what then is a good soil for indoor plants? Well, I think that a good potting mix for indoor plants should be airy, crumbly and very fast draining. Water should be able to soak through it and drain out very quickly. I always make my own potting mixes for my plants. I usually repot most nursery bought plants into a mix like this which is airy and very fluffy almost like a cookie crumble. My potting mix is usually a combination of 30% garden soil. Garden soil provides a certain amount of density for plant stability and it comes with its own nutrients. I add 40% cocoa bark or cocoa chips. Cocoa chips provides excellent porosity. You can also use leaf litter if you can't find cocoa chips. I add 20% perlite. Perlite is an inorganic additive derived from heated volcanic glass. It is excellent at retaining water while also aerating the soil. I add another 20% of cocoa peat. Cocoa peat is a byproduct of coconuts and it is also excellent at retaining water. Finally, I always add in a handful of horticultural charcoal or activated charcoal because it is rich in carbon and can draw out impurities from the soil. The best thing about this potting mix is that it is great for people who are heavy handed with a watering can because the soil dries out quickly preventing any damage. 
I've come back an hour later after watering this Anthurian Clarivernium which is in my potting mix. As you can see, the soil is still fluffy, not dense at all and it easily crumbles in my hand and it doesn't leave my hand looking sticky or muddy. Cacti and succulents however need a totally different growing medium, one that is extremely fast draining, porous, gritty and sandy. A common recipe includes garden soil plus coarse sand plus perlite plus pumice which is a lightweight volcanic rock which provides great aeration and drainage plus charcoal in a 30-30-20-10-10 combination. Except for the cactus mix, I usually make my potting mixes with whatever is at hand. But nowadays, I find myself leaving one component completely out of my mixes. And that is the little secret I wanted to tell you today. Most of my potting mixes these days do not include any garden soil and I've found that my plants are growing faster, look happier and are generally more pest free than when they were simply in garden soil. So there you go. To have healthy plants, we need to shift our focus to a plant's root system. And a root system can only grow, spread and thrive if we give it an airy, porous, fast draining potting mix. Your choice of potting mix can dramatically impact the life and quality of your plants. I'd love to know what your favorite potting mixes are. So do leave your ideas in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe to my channel because it helps me keep making these videos for you. See you next week.